The Rock is a 1996 American action thriller film directed by Michael Bay, produced by Daw Simpson and Jerry Brodheimer, and written by David Weisberg, Douglas S. Cook and Mark Rosner. The film stars Sean Connery, Nicolas Cage and Ed Harris, with William Forsyth and Michael Bean co-starring. In the film, the Pentagon assigns a team comprising an FBI chemist and a former SAS captain with a team of SEALs to break into Alcatraz, where a road general and a road group of Marines have seized all the tourists on the island and have threatened to launch rockets. Filled with nerve gas upon San Francisco unless the U.S. government pays $100 million to the next of kin of 83 men who were killed on missions that the general led and that the Pentagon denied. The Rock was dedicated to the memory of co-producer Da Simpson III who died five months before its release. The film received positive reviews from critics, and was nominated for Best Sound at the 69th Academy Awards. It was also a financial success, earning box office receipts of over $335 million against a production budget of $75 million, and became the fourth highest grossing film of 1996. Plot Disillusioned Brigadier General Francis Hummel and his second-in-command Major Tom Baxter lead a road group of U.S. First Recon Marines against a heavily guarded naval weapons depot to steal the stockpile of the ex-gas-loaded M55 rockets. The next day, Hummel and his men seize control of Alcatraz Island, taking the tourists and guards hostages. Hummel contacts the FBI and the Pentagon threatening to launch the rockets against San Francisco unless the U.S. government pays him $100 million from a military slush fund, which he will distribute to his men and the families of recon Marines who died on covert missions under his command, but whose deaths were not compensated. The Department of Defense and the FBI develop a plan to retake the island using a U.S. Navy SEAL team led by Commander Anderson, the FBI's top chemical weapons specialist, Dr. Stanley Goodspeed and the only inmate ever to escape Alcatraz, John Mason. FBI Director James Womack bribes Mason with a pardon, and Mason reluctantly agrees, but Womack subsequently destroys the pardon, and Mason is set up in the hotel. He escapes, resulting in a car chase with good speed through the streets of San Francisco as Mason reunites with his estranged daughter, Jade Angelou. The team successfully infiltrates Alcatraz, but Hummel's men are alerted to their presence and ambush them in a shower room. Anderson and all of the SEALs are killed, leaving only Mason and Goodspeed alive. Goodspeed wants to finish the mission and attempts to strong-arm Mason into helping. Mason, seeing his chance to escape custody, disarms Goodspeed. Mason changes his mind about helping Goodspeed for the safety of his daughter. Mason and Goodspeed eliminate several teams of Marines and disable 12 of the 15 rockets by removing their guidance chips. Hummel threatens to execute a hostage if they do not surrender and return the chips. Mason destroys them before surrendering to Hummel to try reasoning with him and stall for time. Goodspeed disables another rocket but then gets captured. With the incursion team lost, the backup plan is initiated. An airstrike by X-18CS with thermite plasma, which will neutralize the poison gas but also kill everyone on the island. Mason and Goodspeed escape. And Mason explains why he was held prisoner, he was a former British SAS captain and Mile 6 operative who was captured after stealing a microfilm containing details of the United States' most closely guarded secrets. Knowing he would be suicided if he returned it, he spent the last 30 years in prison without trial for refusing to hand it over. When Hummel's deadline for the ransom passes, he is urged by his men to fire the rocket. Although he does, he redirects it to detonate at sea. When confronted by Captains Darrow and Fry, Hummel explained the rocket threat was an elaborate bluff, as he had never intended to harm innocent civilians. He declares the mission over and orders the Marines to leave Alcatraz with some hostages and the remaining rocket to cover their retreat, while he assumes the blame. Darrow and Fry, realizing they will not be getting paid, mutiny against him. A firefight ensues, Baxter is killed defending Hummel, who is mortally wounded. The general manages to tell good speed where the last rocket is before dying. Darrow and Fry proceed with the plan to fire on San Francisco. Good speed seeks out the rocket while Mason deals with the remaining Marines. As the jets approach, good speed disables the rocket before killing Darrow and Fry. Though he signals that the threat is over, one jet accidentally drops a bomb. No hostages are injured, but the blast throws good speed into the bay, and Mason rescues him. 
Goodspeed reports a successful mission but lies that Mason died during the blast. He admits to Mason that owed Mac to up the pardon and offers him a way off the island and where to find cash in his hotel room. Grateful, Mason reveals the location of the microfilm as he and Goodspeed part ways. Sometime later, Goodspeed and his newlywed wife Carlo hastily drive away from a church in Kansas after having retrieved the microfilm. Cast cast member Michael Bean signing the cover of the film Bond DVD in 2012 Sean Connery as John Patrick Mason Nicholas Cage as Stanley Goodspeed, FBI Ed Harris as General Francis X Hummel, USMC Michael Bean as Commander Anderson, US Ant William Ursyth as Ernest Paxton, FBI David Morse as Major Tom Baxter, USMC John Spencer as FBI Director James Wolfe Mac John Seema Winley as Captain Hendricks, USMC Tony Todd as Captain Arrow. USMC Volkeem Woodbine as Sergeant Crisp, USMC Danny Nucci as Lieutenant Shepard, US Aunt Claire Forlatney as Jay Bangelou, Mason's daughter Vanessa Marcel as Carlo Perstalazzi, Good Speed's fiancé, Gregory Sportlder as Captain Fry, USMC in addition, Stuart Wilson appears as General Al Kramer, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, with David Marshall Grant as White House Chief of Staff Hayden Sinclair. Production Jonathan Hemslet participated in writing the script which became the subject of a dispute with the Writers Guild of America. The spec script by David Weisberg and Douglas Cook was reworked by several writers, but other than the original team, Mark Rosner was the only one granted official credit by Guild Arbitration. The rule is that the credited writing team must contribute 50% of the final script effectively limiting credits to the screenplay's initial authors, plus one rewrite team. Despite their work on the script, Neither Henslet nor Aaron Sorkin was credited in the film. The director Michael Bay wrote an open letter of protest, in which he criticized the arbitration procedure as a sham and a travesty. He said Henslet had worked closely with him on the movie and should have received screen credit. For Quentin Tarantino was also an uncredited screenwriter. Five Los Angeles based British screenwriting team Dick Clement and Ian LaFrenadise were brought in at Connery's request to rewrite his lines, but ended up altering much. Of the film's dialogue. Six, it was Nicolas Cage's idea that his character would not swear. His euphemisms include G Wiz. Citation needed. They had worked closely with Ed Harris to develop his character as concretely as possible, later adding a sympathetic edge to Hummel. Citation needed. There were tensions during shooting between director Bay and Walt Disney Studios executives who were supervising the production. On the commentary track for the Criterion Collection DVD, Bay recalls the time when he was preparing to leave the set for a meeting with the executives when he was approached by Sean Connery in golfing attire. Seven Connery, who also produced the film, asked Bay where he was going, and when Bay explained he had a meeting with the executives, Connery asked if he could accompany him. Bay complied, and when he arrived in the conference room, the executives' jaws dropped when they saw Connery appear behind him. According to Bay, Connery then stood up for Bay and insisted that he was doing a good job and should be left alone. Eight, most of the film was shot on location in the Alcatraz prison on Alcatraz Island. As it is governed by the National Park Service, it was not possible to close down Alcatraz, and much of the filming had to accommodate tour parties milling around. Nine, the scene in which FBI director Womack is thrown off the balcony was filmed on location at the Fairmont Hotel in San Francisco. The filming led to numerous calls to the hotel by people who saw a man dangling from the balcony. Tent. The film's closing scene was shot outside the historic Sacred Heart Mission Church in Santa Coy, California. 11. At one point, Arnold Schwarzenegger was to have played a role of good speed. Schwarzenegger turned a role down because he did not like the script. 12. This was Bay's first movie to be shot in a widescreen to 39 1 aspect ratio, via Super 35. On the commentary track for the Criterion Collection DVD of Armageddon, Bay recalls not liking the format, due to the quality of the release prints, and did not touch the format again until Bad Boys II, at which point the digital intermediate process was available. 13 The same also applied with cinematographer John Schwartzman, who also wouldn't touch the format again until seeing the skewed controversy censorship in the original UK DVD release. The scene in which Connery throws a knife through Scarpity's throat and says you must never hesitate to cage was cut, although the scene was shown on British television. 14 Consequently, the later scene in which Connery says to Cage, I'm rather glad you didn't hesitate too long, lost its impact on viewers who had not seen the first scene.
Other cuts included the reduction of multiple gunshot impacts into Gamble's feet in the morgue down to a single hit, a close-up of his screaming face as the air conditioner falls onto him, the sound cut to Mason snapping the Marine's neck and to bloody gunshot wounds to Hummel and Baxter. Both near the end of the film. 14 Iraqi chemical weapons program A scene from the film was the basis for incorrect and false descriptions of the Iraqi chemical weapons program. Britain's secret intelligence service was led to believe Saddam Hussein was continuing to produce weapons of mass destruction by a false agent who based his reports on the movie. According to the Chilkit Inquiry. 15 in September 2002. Mile 6 Chief Sir Richard Deer Loeb said the agency had acquired information from a New source revealing that Iraq was stepping up production of chemical and biological warfare agents. The source, who was said to have direct access claimed senior staff were working seven days a week while the regime was concentrating a great deal of effort on the production of anthrax. Dear Loeb told the chairman of the Joint Intelligence Committee JIC Sir John Scarlett, that they were on the edge of a significant intel breakthrough which could be the key to unlock Iraq's weapons program. However, Questions were raised about the agent's claims when it was noticed his description bore a striking resemblance to a scene from the film. It was pointed out that glass containers were not typically used in chemical munitions, and that a popular movie The Rock had inaccurately depicted nerve agents being carried in glass beads or spears, the Chilkut report stated. By February 2003, the month before the invasion of Iraq, Mile 6 concluded that their source had been lying over a period of time but failed to inform No. 10 or others, even though Prime Minister Tony Blair had been briefed on this intelligence. 16 1718 According to The Independent, the false claims of weapons of mass destruction were the justification for UK's entering the war. 18 The film's co writer David Weisberg said, What was so amazing was anybody in the poison gas community would immediately know that this was total bullshit, such obvious bullshit. Weisberg said he was unsurprised a desperate agent might resort to films for inspiration, but dismayed that authorities didn't do apparently the most basic fact-checking or vetting of the information. If you'd just ask a chemical weapons expert, it would have been immediately obvious it was ludicrous. Weisberg said he had had some funny emails after the report, but he felt it's not a nice legacy for the film. It's tragic that we went to war. He concluded. 19 Music The soundtrack to The Rock was released on the same day as the film, June 7, 1996, by Hollywood Records. Nick Glennie Smith and Hans Zimmer were the principal composers, while Harry Gregson Williams 2021 was the score producer, with additional music composed by Don Harper, Stephen M. Stern and Gregson Williams. 22 Reception Box Office for its opening weekend. The film grossed $25 million, beating Bout Mission. Impossible to reach the number one spot. 23. It would be overtaken by the cable guy during its second weekend. 24. Produced on a $75 million budget, The Rock grossed the total of $134 million in the US and Canada and $201 million elsewhere. For a worldwide total of $335 million, it was the seventh highest grossing film for the US box office in 1996 and the fourth highest grossing U.S. film worldwide that year. Two critical response on Rotten Tomatoes. The film has an approval rating of 68% based on 71 reviews, with an average rating of 6.7 over 10. The website's critics consensus reads, for visual thrills, it can't be beat. Just don't expect The Rock to engage your brain. 26 on Metacritic, the film has a weighted average score of 58 out of 100, based on 24 critics. Indicating mixed or average reviews. 27 audiences polled by Cinema Score gave the film an average grade of A on an A plus to F scale. 28. Roger Ebert awarded the film 3.5 out of 4 stars, praising it as a first rate, slam bang action thriller with a lot of style and no little humor. 29. Todd McCarthy of Variety gave the film a positive review, commenting the yarn has its share of gaping holes and jaw dropping improbabilities, but Director Michael Bay sweeps them all aside with his never take a breath pacing. 30 Richard Corliss, writing for the time, expressed favorable opinions towards the film, saying slick, brutal, and almost human. This is the team spirit action movie mission. Impossible should have been. 31 Accolades The Rock won several minor awards, including Best on Screen, Duo for Connery and Cage at the MTV Movie Awards. It was also nominated for an Academy Award for Best Sound Care in O'Connell. 
Greg P. Russell and Keith A. Western. 32 The film was selected for a limited edition DVD release by the Criterion Collection. A distributor of primarily art house film hit categorizes as important classic and contemporary films and cinema at its finest. In an essay supporting the selection of The Rock, Roger Ebert, who was strongly critical of most of Bay Slater's films, gave the film three and one half out of four stars, calling it an action picture that rises to the top of the genre because of illiterate, witty screenplay and skilled craftsmanship in the direction and special effects. 33 in 2014. Time Out polled several film critics, directors, actors and stunt actors to list their top action films. 34 The Rock was listed at 74th place on the list. 35 in 2019, Tom Man from Collider ranked The Rock as Michael Bay's best film. The Rock is not only Michael Bay's finest film, it's also a perfect snapshot of the height of 90s action movies. 36 Abandoned sequel in June 2017. Director Michael Bay discussed his idea for a follow-up to The Rock that never developed past the concept that Goodspeed and Mason are chased by the government after escaping, due to possession of the microfilm as shown in the ending. 37 See also list of films featuring the United States Navy SEALs.